The experiment was very simple because of what I did, I started looking at the most basic level of learning. And even that, even within the animal literature, we talk about this kind of learning, which is the technical term is habituation. And you're doing it right now <laughs> because you're not paying attention to the lights, to the smell, to the temperature, to this and that. Like, oh, you are, but uh, uh, you're kind of, you have already decided that it's not going to kill you right now. <laughs> so you can kind of ignore it. But if the alarm was going to go off right now, uh, your body will be ready to respond. So uh, the idea is very simple. Like, uh, you can't pay attention to everything that is happening around you all the time because you wouldn't last very long. So um, you cut out, you remove the, the information that is irrelevant to you right now. And, uh, but you want to be responsive in case some relevant bits of information arrives, like the alarm. So um, I did the same experiment and I used Mimosa. It was a plant that was used from Darwin to Bose and many others. And actually it's a plant that even from the ancient times uh, it's always attracted our attention. Why? Because it moves at our time scale. And so we can actually see it doing something. And basically the question was the same. It's like uh, if I uh, do something that is kind of scary or disturbing at first, but it's not deadly, it looks like it could be potentially a problem, but actually through experience the plant uh, should realize that like, well, nothing really happens. So this plant closes the leaves quite rapidly uh, when it's disturbed. And so, I, as you just saw, <laughs> I created this um, kind of torture thingy. <laughs> <laughs> but no plants were hurt, really, <laughs> during the conduction of this experiment. <laughs> Um, so basically, I would drop the plant, and the base of that uh, structure uh, is uh, foam. So the plant will be dropped from a set height. And of course, the first time that the plant is dropped, uh, the plant closes the leaves because it's like, what was that? <laughs> um, then you do it again, and then you do it again. And that's exactly what we would do if it was an animal. You know, you repeat, uh, and you repeat several times. And um, in my, in my, what we call that repeat is a train. And the train for this experiment was like 60 drops consecutively. But what, it, what happened, as you can see from that cartoon, is that uh, the plants actually, after two, three of those supposed to be 60 drops, uh, they were like, oh, uh, I got it. <laughs> I got it. Nothing is happening, and I'm not bothering closing my leaves. And it makes total sense because, uh, of course, open leaves, full photosynthetic capacity, right? When you close your leaves, you might protect yourself from predators, for example, so that you look smaller, or uh, this plant has got spines that stick out when the leaves are closed. So, you know, it's, uh, you're defending. But if there is actually no danger, you're defending against nothing. But by closing, you are cutting away your opportunity to feed on light. And for this plant, when the leaves are closed, it loses like 40% of photosynthetic capacity. That's a lot, especially if there's no reason. And so in my experiment, actually, I had plants that were in an environment where there was lots of light. So making a mistake is not that critical. You can make an extra mistake and it's okay. But there was a group of plants, <coughs> sorry, there was actually in an environment with, where there was sufficient light, but not an abundance of light. So making the wrong decision there could have been more critical. And as you might uh, can guess, uh, what the plants do is like when they are in good environments, they take their time to learn. They still learn, but they are slower. And, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. I, I can drop another time. While the one that they are in low light environments, of course, it's, there is an urgency to get it right because that could be, in a real scenario, could be a really dangerous thing to do if you don't get it. Mm. And so those plants learn very quickly. Mm. And uh, so you say, oh, excellent, you know, plants, you know, it looks like they're learning the <laughs> trick. <laughs> so then what you do is like, I wonder how long they can remember this. So I thought, like, three, three days. I come back in three days. That should be enough. They, they won't remember. And they did. Just as if we just did that. And they said, OK, then I come back in six days. And again, it was like, an, ah, yeah, we know this trick. <laughs> and I thought, fine, then. So I left them for a month. 
And, uh, and not only that, but I divided my original groups, low light, high light, in half. Some of the plants stayed in those groups where they, you know, so the environment where they learned the trick became, remained the same as when then I tested them a month later. But the other half of, the, of each group got swapped. <laughs> so some plants learn in a low light environment, but then they find themselves tested in a high light environment mm -hmm. and vice versa. And so, you know, suddenly it's like, okay, so you learned a trick, but it's context dependent. So would you change what you're doing? And what was interesting, many things were interesting. One, that after 28 days, uh, the plants were like, yeah, yeah, it's the drop. <laughs> Would you stop it? I mean, it's a bit annoying, actually, so if you don't mind. We got it. And um, so that was the first embarrassment. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> and, uh, but the other really interesting thing was that for, of course, the plants that stayed in the environment they, uh, where they were trained, they just performed as expected. Uh, the plants that went from a low light environment to, from a high light environment to a low light environment, so they they learned in a comfy place, but then they found themselves in a not so comfy place. Well, those guys suddenly behaved as like, oof, the environment is going bad, and so the response was very quick. Mm. But the interesting part was for the other group, the one that went from the low light environment to the high, and you say, like, now you can relax. The environment is going good right? But they don't. And what's my suspicion is that what they're doing is like, not only they are learning the trick and they remember it, but they're also learning another aspect of that context, which is the environment changes. The environment can change and it went from bad to good once, so it can return to bad again. Mm. So they remain uh, on alert as if it's like, okay, anytime now, it could just go back that way and, you know, so we're ready. And they do this, and of course, there is no brain or neurons, and that is the part that is very disturbing. But <laughs>